Um, welcome to ACX Thursday. It is Thursday. That's right. It is what day is it? The 12th? The 12th of March. Am I gonna like every video? I'm gonna ask what day it is. <laughs> I should probably start figuring that out before I press go. But, anyways, hello and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. Thank you so much for being here for ACX Thursday. If you're new to the channel or you're new to watching, please take a quick moment to subscribe and like and uh, retweet this or share this, whether you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook or, or Instagram or uh, Twitter, wherever you are, uh, take a moment and show some love. ACX Thursday is, if you're new, is all about, uh, I give you a little spiel about what's going on in my mind, and then it is really a straightforward question and answer session. Whatever type questions you have, any comments you want to make, any discussions that you want to have about things that are going on with ACX or in the audiobook industry, this is the time and the place to do it. So with all of that being said, I want to talk to you today about the importance of listening to be a great audiobook narrator. I, I have a background in acting and theater, right? That's what I went to school for. Uh, it's what I've done for most of my life, uh, whether it's been acting myself or coaching or directing, teaching, et cetera, et cetera. And now doing voice acting and coaching and directing and all that kind of stuff here as well. And I have to tell you, one of the most important things we can do to learn our craft is to watch and listen. So if you're on stage, right, watching other theater, getting immersed in what you're trying to do by watching others and learning what's possible – helps you become a better actor. And the same with being an audiobook narrator. Listening to audiobooks is key to being an audiobook narrator. If you're an audiobook narrator and you never listen to audiobooks, I mean, it's just, you know, it's how can you ever expect to expand your horizons, right? Expand your knowledge about what's possible. You know, they say that we are the sum, right? We are the sum of all of our experiences. OK, so that we can never pretty much go beyond those experiences. Yes, we can be creative and, and we can hopefully create something based off of what other people have already done. But how could you truly be creative if you have not tried to take in as much out there as possible? So I'm trying what I'm trying to get at is to be better at narrating audiobooks. The first thing and the most important thing you need to do is you need to listen. Now, you might say, all right, well, that's cool. I definitely want to listen to audiobooks, but like, you know, this audiobook is 10 hours long. When am I going to do my audiobook stuff and listen to that? Well, I have a solution for you. Instead of doing that, I want you to go to Audible and every single book on Audible, all right, usually has between a one to five minute sample. Most have four to five minute samples that you can listen to completely free. You can find whatever genre you're looking for, all right, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, all of the different categories that fall in between there. And I'm also going to give you something even more. I want you to listen to those, and I want you to go through, and I want you to hear the cadence, and I want you to hear how the tone of the voice is for the different ones. But here's the key. Uh, here's another cool thing. Let's say that you get a book and you're working on it, right, and you get offered a book from ACX, et cetera, et cetera, and as you're working on this book – OK, you're looking at the category and you're like, oh, OK, this is a fiction thriller book. And, you know, it's like a thriller and I've never narrated a thriller. So I, I don't know how I should narrate thriller fiction books. Well, the great thing is, is you can go to Audible, right? You can go to Audible and you can be like, OK, you type in, you know, uh, thriller books, you find the category and you start listening to samples of people narrating books that are thrillers. And what you can do is you can start to hear how people are doing it. And then that gives you an idea of how you can do it. This works for any genre. This works for any category that you can think of. It gives you an idea. I'm not telling you to go and try to impersonate these people. But what I'm telling you is imitation is acting. Acting is imitation. 
That that's basically that that's what this all of that we do is boiled down to. Don't get imitation mixed up with impersonation. But imitation is imitating cadence, imitating emotion, imitating style, imitating tone. Acting is imitation. It is in any form of acting because acting is not real life. It's heightened life, but it's not real life. Okay, it's imitation. So in order to imitate, we have to listen. In our case, we're listening. Okay, we're listening to all of these different people and artists. So this is a really big, big, hopefully eye opener for how you can expand your horizons and to get better at narrating audiobooks by simply listening to other um, um, other narrators, especially ones in the categories or the genres in which you are do uh, you are actually narrating. So if you're narrating nonfiction and it's like a you know a uh, maybe it's a technical book on uh, for CISOs, right? Why don't you? Know, I, if you could tell I've done so many books on CISOs, it's crazy. So you <laughs> right you would learn a lot by just listening to samples of people narrating audiobooks about CISOs, right? It's super important to look at that and like put together a thought about how you could actually go about doing this in a manner in which is expected because the people who have written these books and the ones that you know that we are trying to narrate they're going to have an idea in their mind about how it should sound and i guarantee you these people have listened to other audiobooks to figure out how they feel like it should sound too all right we expect so just like all of acting and voice acting especially voice acting i think there are unspoken rules, right? There's unspoken sets of rules for every, speci uh, every specific genre, every tone, every type of commercial, video narration, e-learning, all that kind of stuff. There's definitely different tones or different expectations, and they're not written down anywhere, but you know them, especially if you've been doing this for a little while. Just like a radio spot, we expect that to be a certain way, but then we expect to, an inspiring video narration you know, uh, about the environment is going to be different than that radio spot. Okay, it's, 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 it's the unspoken expectations. And the same thing goes for this and the different genres and audiobooks. And the best way to learn that is to listen. Okay. All right. So I hope I I beat that you know that poor dead fish enough. But uh, <laughs> this is the time where uh, you have an opportunity to post questions and thoughts and ideas so that we could get into a uh, um, a conversation about whatever's going on. There's a lot going on with ACX right now. If you haven't noticed, especially if you're working a lot on there, which uh, I have a lot of students and a lot of people working on ACX, and you know I get to keep up with what's happening. So there's a lot of stuff happening on ACX right now. Uh, so if you have questions, thoughts, comments, please go ahead and post them at this moment. And uh, again, I want to welcome everybody from Instagram. We've got Brian, we got Walter. What's up? It's good to have you guys. We've got uh, Shaba. Hey, Shaba, over on YouTube. We've got Flip. We've got Ayato. Uh, and we've got Marcus from Facebook. It's good to have you. I'm glad that something is actually happening from Facebook because uh, my I stream to all these platforms, but they don't always. Facebook doesn't allow you to do as much anymore because they're Facebook. Anyways, uh, if you haven't noticed, ACX is having problems processing lots of audiobooks, right? Especially royalty share books, or just books in general, but a lot of royalty share books. There's a lot of books that are backed up. And again, uh, I think we talked about this last week. There is a lot of information uh, going around saying that they could be backed up for months and months and months and months. And, I, I, you know, so you know, this is just something to be aware about, uh, to be aware of when you go looking for books and what you are trying to do. I recommended that you should try to take the money up front or at least do a half and half deal where you're paid half up front, half at the end of the book, or at least a royalty share uh, plus book because the likelihood now, if your book sits for six months to eight months that you're waiting to get, you know, your book through, okay, that's a long time before you even begin to see a penny, so, you know, it, it might not be a bad idea to start pushing towards more Royalty Plus deals. Uh, remember, Royalty Share Plus is where you also get paid uh, some of the costs, like you get paid production costs, 
you know, maybe $50 per hour, and then you also get royalties for it as well. But this just gives you money. And by the way, there's a lot of different things going on, so I recommend that. And when I say different things, I mean like there's a lot of scams that are going around. And when I mean scams, I mean like there's a lot of people who are possibly um, – sorry, I hit the mic. They're possibly trying to – I don't know. Maybe, you know, try to the, the the popular thing right now is getting people to narrate stuff and then saying things like, well, can you say it's done by someone else? Right. That's kind of becoming very popular right now. And I, you know, that's that's a very weird thing. It's not illegal to do that. I mean, it's called like ghost writers do it all the time. And you could be like a ghost narrator, but it is kind of awkward. And and, and it can be misleading, especially if it's some sort of document that are you're reading something that could be, you know, misunderstood as someone saying it like it's law, you know, like it's something um, where you're you're trying to defraud someone else, you know, so that so you got to be careful when you're doing things like that. Absolutely. Um, but it's not technically illegal unless you go down that route. But anyway, so I just kind of stay away from that stuff. But the lot of there's so much of that stuff going on, and there's a lot of things. I've, I've heard a lot of things of people saying coming out of you know different countries that are struggling, that are struggling more than others right now because of the coronavirus. Lots of things are happening, and it's important to stay apprised of those things. That's why I recommend you make sure you're paid up front, or at least do what's generally. I mean, it's a general thing. You take half up front, half upon delivery. OK, so that you're making sure that you are getting paid. And usually people, if they're trying to scam you or whatever, they're most likely not going to pay you up front. OK, so that's a good way to check yourself and don't be don't be um, lured by the fact that you've been offered a book. It's so when I first started, I was so just excited that someone offered me a book. I didn't care. OK, but I promise you there's plenty of work out there. So don't you know? use your common sense. Watch the videos here on this channel. Make sure you're not doing things like getting yourselves in situations that you're going to spend a lot of time working and not, you know, get anything from it. OK, I'm sorry. This light over here is really annoying me. I don't know. I, I, I have a new light on and I, I feel like it's a whole different look here. It's really super bright. I don't know if I can just maybe I'll turn it that way or something that's a little bit better <laughs> maybe a little bit now i got a little shiny dot on my head oh well uh anyways let's go ahead and answer some questions uh i see some people posting things about what i was just saying uh i always says i get a large variety of books that's why i like them new adventure every day absolutely i love that too that logo thing you told us got me an interview on zoom with fiverr really cool people nice awesome man uh, let's see. Mark said, hey, Zach says, I made it. What's up, man? Wow, that's why. Iota says, thanks. Luckily, one have one royalty share at the moment. Nice. Zach says, what do you mean by ACX is backed up? Well, basically, ACX came out um, and I, I had some um, students that I worked with who had messaged ACX and asked them why they had books that have been backed up for months and months and months. And ACX came back and said, we've been been backed up since November of last year and that we possibly don't see getting through everything and back on track until November of this year. So, you know, that's, they said they're short staffed. Um, I personally think it has a lot to do with all of the scams that are going on right now. Plus, there was some big things that came out in India, right, with uh, some uh, top rated YouTube people. And I don't know if you've paid attention to this, but there's been a lot of stuff on YouTube about how you can just make money simply recording over your cell phone through ACX. So ACX doesn't have, remember, ACX has to go through each and every one, right? So if their staff, the, the staff, which they're trying to hire more staff, uh, and that's been a problem with a lot of these places because our businesses are blowing up. I mean, the voice, the voiceover industry is growing and growing, and there's more and more work available out there. But their staffing is is a problem, and an ACX is a problem as well. So you know that's kind of what's happening with them, and that's why I recommend that you might you know slow down on the royalty share stuff and try to gets you know paid up front more now as opposed to doing it just because of the amount of time it's taking to just get a book through okay uh there are so many books acx can't keep up with oh, well and that's true too i mean it's just it's just getting off it. and you have to think with everything going on with the coronavirus more and more people are home 
They're going to be writing books. They're going to be publishing books. They're going to be trying to figure out how to make money from home. And there's so much out there on YouTube, especially about how to make money reading out loud, how you can make all this money. Now, we know that that's not true or how you can make all this money by writing a book and putting it on Amazon for free. We know it's a lot harder than that, but you know, people are still doing it in droves. So, you know, you've got to be aware of all that. So when you go to work, you pick the books, you know, using common sense and the ways I've I've showed you about looking at the ranking, making sure it's a good ranking under 50,000, making sure that, you know, there's verified purchases making sure that the book the you know the author possibly has other books there's been, it's been on Amazon for months you know maybe 6 months to a year um if it hasn't if it doesn't meet all those criteria that doesn't mean you don't work with the book it just means you got to go into it with your eyes open okay you I mean you got to go into it with the 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 idea that it could possibly not turn out as well as you know, a book that has all of those stats and an author who has published multiple books. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Iota says they are working on an algorithm to check the books. I got offered to try it before it goes live. They're doing right. I mean, there, there's they they can't keep up with it having doing the manual way. They've got to so uh, you know that's going to change a lot. Right, that's going to change a lot on ACX two, and hopefully it will make uh, it will make our lives easier and and quicker. Do you know what I mean? Because for us, you know, we are doing things correctly, we are putting things through, we are making high quality work. So that's nice when it it plays in our favor. All right, Marcus uh, says, have any of your students been in the middle of a ghost narrator chicanery? Um, would it be inappropriate to contact a, royal, a rights holder once you find the title you were hired to produce off of ACX already exists on ACX? Okay, so first off, have you had students? Yes, well, I've had I've had many people I know. Uh, I recommend all my students don't do it, but I, I do know a lot of people who are going through it. Would it be inappropriate to contact the rights holder once you find the title you were hired to produce off of ACX already exists on ACX? So maybe, Marcus, can you elaborate on that? Do you mean like it's on Amazon? Like, do you mean it's being... I'm confused about what you're... Are, oh, are you saying that you – oh, I get what you're saying. Oh, uh, you know what? I mean, psh, that's totally up to you. Why not? Right? Because if you're doing the book and you find it on ACX but someone else is trying to hire you to take your narration and make some, you know, off the top, you know, I mean, that's – exact. look at exactly. You're just cutting out the middleman. I mean, people will make money. I mean, think about it. They could do that. Right. They could do that. They could offer to pay you one hundred dollars an hour and they're getting paid one hundred and fifty dollars. So they're making, you know, so in the books, like four hours long, they're making two hundred dollars for you doing all the work and them doing a little bit of back and forth. I mean, that's I mean, that's a pretty darn easy business model if you think about it. OK, that's why I preach all the time. You have to know how to market You've got to know how to run a business so that other people don't take advantage of you. That's a great question, Marcus. Absolutely reach out to the rights holder. Why not? Submit it yourself. If you find it, submit it, submit it yourself. Don't submit it through someone else. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Or I'd make the other person pay you. <laughs> That's what I would do. I'd make them pay you money up front. I'm telling you what, when you, when you have these situations, you make people pay you up front. You, you do away with a lot of issues, okay? All right. Uh, let's see. Um, Marcus says, exactly, if my performance won the auditions. Yep, yep. All right, you guys. Well, as if uh, there isn't anything else, I really do appreciate you stopping by today and watching. Take an opportunity again to hit the subscribe button <laughs> on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. We're so close to 1,000 now. We're at like 960 something. It goes up every single day. I'm I'm really super excited. Uh, please uh, share this and everything. And, um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Oh, we had... 
summon arrows. We have other things coming in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's see. Neil says, from a voice talent perspective, how would you rank ACX versus Find Away Voices versus Penguin Random Audio House? Cool, Neil. Great question. Um, so first, uh, Find Away Voices, we talked about last time, and I said I would be bringing some reviews about it. I really do like that platform, okay? Um and Penguin Random House, okay, if you go to Penguin Random House, there's also uh, a site called Ahab, which anyone can – it's a, a subsidiary of Penguin Random Audio House uh, – Peng, Penguin Random House, and they – uh, it's like your free uh, it's a free place they offer for you as a narrator to put your you know throw your hat in the ring as it were. Um, but what I will say to all of these different sites is is that ACX probably it still is the largest marketplace at the current moment for people for freelancers. All right, people trying who who can just go and have access to thousands of books to audition for and work directly with the authors. So there's a lot that you sidestep, right? You don't you don't go through all of the the publisher things and that. But because of that, there's going to be a lot of price variations. It's going to be wild. Okay? Find away voices, they do not have price negotiations. And Penguin Random House, that's all going to go through the publisher, right? There's going to be rates there that the publisher has to charge and so much so that you don't have the, you know, like ACX, like the Wild Wild West, right? Where it, it can be direct and it can't and, – and people like that. Like it's really good for indie authors and it's good for narrators who are just starting out. At the same time, it can be challenging if you don't know what you're doing. But like I said, ACX is just one of the largest places to go where you can bypass all the other stuff and just work directly with the author and come up with a situation that works for the both of you. Whereas Findaway Voices, they have a very like they actually have a set rates that you have to have. And because they also work with a lot of um uh, union uh, SAG after people on Find Away Voices, same with Penguin Random House, which which that being the publisher, it goes through the publisher. You don't have, you know, maybe high profile if the author wants to meet him, but you don't have uh, interactions with the author. Do you see what I mean? So you know that's that's the difference between the three. Which one's better than the other? It's really up to you. I mean, which one works the best for you? I would say that if you want to start making more money. Like more money up front with your audiobook narrating, you know, like thousands and thousands of dollars and things like that for a book. You need to start looking at these other places like Find Away Voices, like Penguin Random House, because you're not going to make all that money up front all the time from ACX. ACX is a great place to kick off your career, get some books and get paid a decent rate, but you're not going to be making, you know, four or $500 an hour per finished hour on ACX generally. There's usually only a book or two ever that's posted for that much. And a lot of times it's posted by an author who already knows the narrator and they're just posting it through there so they can actually go through the indie part so they can have all the rights themselves. Does that make sense? So that's that's my view about that, Neil, and hopefully that helps out with you. Um, Okay, Margaret says, uh, wait, wait, Iato said, in three weeks, I will be full-time voice actor thanks to you, Earl Hall, Deweese, and Mike Russell. That's awesome, man. Congrats, dude. That's that's awesome. Awesome. Uh, Mark's, Marcus says, in the middle of a project, and then you discover the issue. Iato says, take care. And they, oh, they say, Graphics, Grant, what's up? I have made a ton of money on ACX this year, but I got to say the website itself is kind of garbage. Yeah, I, you know, and then Iota says, how so? Yeah, I, graphics, Graham, I've said this for a long time, you know, for so much business and it being Amazon, you know, or, and we'll see, Audible, so Audible bought ACX, right? And then, of course, Amazon bought Audible and they, you know, so Amazon owns everything now. But yes, the site definitely needs, it could be a lot better in so many different ways. You know, even from the standpoint of the algorithm that they use, like people just basically posting books as, you know, it just scrolls. Like you don't even, there's no algorithm that determines if you're doing lots of books, if you're up front or not. Now, I don't actually dislike that, but it's just, it's, 
the the site itself definitely it need could be so much more with how much business goes through it. So I totally know what you mean. I totally know what you mean. Uh, and I've been saying that for a long time that you would have thought that that site would be one of the best sites out there. And you know I think they are doing what they are the best that they can with what they have. I think the people there are working really hard and they're trying to do everything they can. Uh, but, you know, we don't know about the resources they have or that Amazon gives them or Audible and how all of that works and who's in charge and what limitations they have. So but, you know, definitely I, I feel like the site could use some help. And I hope through all of these troubles and things that that does spur on some extra uh, some extra work on the site. OK, uh, let's see. Pages still out. Don't load at all, and file uploading gets real, really buggy, and there's a lot of chapters. Yep, not at the end of the world, but right. That's true. I agree. I agree. All right, you guys. I will head out now. Thank you so much for watching. Again, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And uh, if you are interested in learning more about ACX, there will be uh, a link to my ACX course in the description, which uh, I love. It's a great, great, great course. So, um, as always, though, thank you so much. Subscribe and have a wonderful Thursday. I will see you tomorrow for Fiverr Friday. Very excited about that. I don't know about you, but my Fiverr business has been going like a skyrocket up, up, up. So I'm very excited about that. All right, you guys have a good one. Take it easy. Goodbye. Goodbye.